today we have Gyre, everyone's favorite electric ballerina. Now, while Gyre may not be an older Warframe like the past few we've covered on the channel, Gyre certainly has an interesting tale to tell, going from a rather average and mediocre frame to becoming a beast in the current meta, and possibly being one of the best DPS frames in the entire game. So with that said, let's check out Gyre and see what she's gone through. Gyre first released on update 31.5, however she actually made her first appearance on Deathstream 160 where the devs first showcased the concepts for Gyre, the 49th Warframe. Now at face value she may come across as a mere female version of Volt, who was the first electricity based character, but what separated Gyre from Volt was the fact that she introduced new bowling physics with her powers as well as utilizing a more Tesla like quality of electricity than just standard shocks. Then come 161, we get to see a first look at our powers in game. So, and yeah, and that is right there the uh, sort of vacuum effect for the second yeah. So you can watch it go through the aisles. And then. A little bowling, I love it. Mm -hmm, a little bit of bowling action. And then our third ability is Cathode Grace. So this is when I create energy regen for myself and my crit chance goes up. As long as I'm killing. During this time, Jire did seem like a very solid Warframe, having a very cohesive kit with a great passive. And it's the fact that she's a caster focused Warframe that appeared to have very potent CC and damage. Her sub zoom also seemed to have at base 12 meters in range, which is also very big, especially for a sub zoom since most others like Pole and Larva had diminished values. Not only that, this update was also going to expand the game world post new war with the Zaramon ship, introducing a bunch of new exciting content and expanding on the lore even more. And the reveal of an Eximus rework left players interested in the game's balance as one of the oldest enemy types in the game was going to get a huge facelift. And of course, we couldn't forget the huge focus revamp we got, which turned Unairu into the greatest tree for high level content. Overall, this update was looking to be great from all the information and content we were getting, and if Jire has the right stats and good enough damage, then she will easily become a top tier Warframe. Unfortunately, come Angels of Zarimon, Jire had some problems, and an important unintended one. The first was her acquisition, and unsurprisingly, they were bugged. Jire's common parts had a bizarre drop rate of 2%, while the rare parts were reversed with a 21% drop rate. This led to a very confusing grind as players would often get her rare parts very quickly while her common parts were just not dropping. To say this frustrated players is an understatement, and Jire became very annoying to farm for as a result. On the flip side though, Jire instantly became an incredible Warframe, but also not so incredible sometimes. She had decent vortex capabilities and fantastic CC, which gave her solid survivability. And her 3 and 4 also allowed her to deal a ridiculous amount of damage, and slapping an armor strip sub zoom made things even more crazy. However, she wasn't overpowered, just very good. Her rotor's well has a mechanic where if you land a critical hit, you will dish out a lightning discharge. However, during this time, there was a bug where the lightning discharge would lower its cooldown permanently, thus causing a huge volley of discharges. However, sometimes the ability wouldn't work this way, thus there were some inconsistencies with the bug. But despite this, Jire was definitely a fun Warframe and the reception was very positive. This unintended mechanic of her ultimate made Jire really strong. However, a week later, they nerfed her. And she stopped doing huge DPS. Yeah, that was short lived. Come patch 31.5.5, they fixed the lightning strike cooldown being permanently decreased when the electric arcs chained to other enemies. Now, Rotorswell has an internal cooldown, but due to how slow it is now, she stopped dealing huge damage and her CC became a lot more mild. And unfortunately, Jire didn't offer much outside of her lightning strikes in comparison to other Warframes. Her CC was nice, but it was the ultimate's huge damage that tied everything together and solidified Jire as a good DPS Warframe. Now that her 4 was nerfed, Jire couldn't live up to the height. And her 3 really didn't hold her up, as the critical boost wasn't that powerful for weapons, and now that her ability damage was significantly lower, the extra CC didn't push Jire to be on par with other staple DPS Warframes. If you wanted CC, play other characters that had actual good CC like Nova, Vauban, or Korra. If you want high damage, play hyper-focused damage characters like Mesa, Saren, or Baruch. Jire just became average, a Warframe with alright CC and average damage. However, there was one thing Jire can do really well, 
and that was shield gating. Since with the dragon key, you can instantly refresh the shield gate with Cathode Grace. And spamming your 2 and 1 made things even easier. Slapping an Arcane Energize and Arcane Avenger still allowed you to red crit and regenerate your energy, which is impressive. And alongside Breach Surge pre-nerf, this did give Gyre some excellent scaling. Albeit not really coming from her powers directly, it was at least something she could do. This was also before Veilbreaker's ammo changes, so Gyre and all Warframes did have the benefit of just spamming Akuva Brahma to no end. It at least gave Gyre something to hang on to. So, come Veilbreaker, we got some exciting changes, buffs, and the new Archon Shard system. Unfortunately, Gyre remained the same. She had little survivability at base, and the most preferred build for her was the Shield Gate, since she couldn't do a lot of damage with her own powers. Players just opted to Shield Gate and use her decent CC instead, since it at least made Gyre stand on her two legs during high level missions. Thanks to her Arc Sphere and Coil Horizon being a pretty fast cast, you can refresh the gate quite easily paired with a 3. Her ability DPS has however was still pretty abysmal, and Eclipse or Roar was used to just boost the damage of her weapons. And well, Magus Lockdown did give you some CC. Literally any band-aid you can think of to try and amend the situation. She wasn't awful like Hydroid, far from it. It's just she needs enemies and missions to function, but the higher you scale, the ability starts to fall off. And Archon Shards were a band-aid that tried to fix her DPS and survivability, but ultimately it didn't matter. And while the armor reduction changes were amazing, those powers were better off on other top tier characters instead. It's just Gyre can do her thing, but other frames can do infinitely better and infinitely easier. Also, Archon Stretch, while seemingly potent on Gyre due to how much electric you can proc, it ultimately didn't fix anything, as Gyre's DPS was slow, and it's also quite insulting that Archon Stretch had just as much energy regen as Cathode Grace without mods, and it's still weaker than Xenuric's energy gen with maximum strength. I mean, at the very least, we did get some client-side fixes to Gyre, so that's always nice, during those rare lobbies where Gyre was seen, but nothing really changed, and the most popular loadouts were utilizing sources outside to alleviate the issues with their base kit. Now come Lua's Prey, Gyre still didn't change. The rework to Grendel gave him possibly the best subzoom in the entire game, as the new Nourish was incredible for just about every character. And while this did help Gyre in terms of her builds and loadouts, her abilities themselves weren't of anything to note. Viral did push her electric proc, so managing her 3 became easier, but then again, Viral helps literally everyone, so it's not really anything special. But at least she's better than last time. Now, the big moment you've been waiting for, Citrine's Last Wish. Another mainline update that introduced some new content while players were anxiously waiting for the Duvuri Paradox. We got Citrine, which completely dominated support and the new Mirror Defense game mode, as well as a bunch of other unrelated things like weapons and arcanes. But more importantly, Gyre got one augment. Update 32.3, Cathode Current. Eliminating an enemy while Cathod Grace is active will release an additional discharge from Rotor's Well with 200% damage and extend its duration by the same amount. Or TLDR, Gyre has been reverted, but this time as a band-aid. This augment single-handedly turned Gyre from a rather average Warframe with middling damage to possibly one of the best DPS Warframes in the entire game overnight, completely fixing her damage as well as providing her a decent boost to her CC since you have an additional stronger Lightning Discharge. And the best part about Cathod Current is that it is consistently being procced, which makes this augment uber powerful as you have to snag kills in order to boost your rotors well. Gyre became excellent for all kinds of missions, but she did excel on endurance missions like Survival, Disruption, and Excavation, where there are an annual supply of enemies to continuously proc on. And with Pillage plus two Tau Forge Reds, Gyre can easily scale into high level missions thanks to a permanent armor strip, further boosting the ult damage. This was and still is a glorious sight to behold, as Gyre quickly rose the ranks amongst the roster and became one of the best characters in the entire game. All she needed was his push to her damage, since her kit was already there at a base level and the abilities did function together. And thanks to this new augment, Gyre also became very strong on ESO, having a max range setup with multi augmented and Archon Stretch made her a very low effort Saren. The new Nourish also further benefits her new setup with Current, as you will be snagging kills very quickly thanks to Viral. 
And finally, come to Fury Paradox, Gyro didn't receive anything directly, but due to how the decrease boosted all Warframes, Gyro became exceptionally strong in the Deferi experience as well as the circuit, and especially potent on Steel Path, being able to scale incredibly well with two full Torment, Vicious Barb, Critical Frost, and so on. And come post Deferi, with all the fancy new incarnate weapons, Gyro has just become a complete menace. Literally. Like, this Warframe is incredibly simple and extremely effective. As long as you get your kills, your ultimate and third spell are on a permanent duration with Cathod Current. And your two acts of the decent vortex to pull mobs together while you can use your one liberally to stun like areas on the map, as well as synergizing into your three and four. And thanks to the electric secondary effect, Gyre has an easier time staying alive for the most part thanks to Cathod Current bolstering the rotor's well damage, since you will be emitting a third discharge thus adding to your CC and survivability. Plus, with the enhanced damage, killing enemies is the best form of CC. And honestly, all of this is possible thanks to her augment. Sometimes, in order to get a Warframe rolling, just slap them with a buff as simple as that. No need for an overhaul or gameplay update when the abilities are there at base. Just a little push and top tier. Anyways, with all of that said, let's check out Jire's powers and see what the elegant theory has to offer. Jire's passive is a little bit tricky to understand, as the in-game description can be misleading. Jire gains a flat 10% critical chance per active electric status proc affecting an individual enemy and dealing 2 times crit damage against that target. With Cathod Grace, this passive and spell will stack up to 300%. However, from the passive alone, it will take 30 stacks of electricity. So using your third spell will ensure you hit the 300% cap much faster at a lower stack total. And because Jire can reach beyond tier 1 critical chance, she can effectively orange and red crit with her powers. Orange crits will start at 11 stacks and red crits at 21 stacks. Unfortunately, her passive does not affect railjack turrets or subzooms, which is a bit of a bummer, and Gyre's electric procs in particular also do not get bonuses from faction buffers like Roar or a boost from Shock Trooper. But apart from the few caveats, this passive is wonderful as it allows Gyre to increase her damage from active play, and the higher level the enemies, the more electric procs you can inflict. Plus, this synergizes extremely well with Thought current. Gyre's first power is Arc Sphere. Arc Sphere allows Gyre to toss an electrical sphere. Once a sphere lands on the ground, object, or enemy, it will expand into an electrical globe that will shock enemies in radius, dealing up to 2000 electric damage at base with a guaranteed status effect. The globe also lasts for a medium duration and has a base 7 meter sight detection. And survivors or new enemies in sight will get zapped for 250 electric damage per second with a guaranteed status effect. The DPS is also multiplied by 2 times times if at least three enemies are struck in the initial impact. This power at first glance may seem like a weak first elemental spell, but it has fantastic synergies with Cathod Grace and Rotor as well, since you're able to gather a lot of electric procs as well as boosting the critical hits from 0 to 300% when triggering the lightning discharges from Rotor as well. And Coil Horizon's vacuum effect will work nicely, pulling in mobs for even more damage. And lastly, it's just a great power for shield gating. It's fast, quick, and cheap, and considering you're always having energy with your 3 it's not a big deal. Jire's second power is Coil Horizon, and is her subzoom, meaning all frames can use it. However, it is on the rather weaker side of subzooms. Jire sends out a heavy bowling like ball. It has a short lifetime, and after the initial duration is over, or if it is manually triggered via ability key, the ball will implode, dealing electric damage with a guaranteed status effect, as well as a vortex effect vacuuming enemies in sight. It's another simple ability, but works once again with Gyre's passive and Cathod Grace, as you can boost this ability's critical hits as well as enhancing Arc Sphere's capabilities with the Vortex synergies. Direct kills with the Coil Horizon and its electric procs or kill assists from allies will also extend the duration of Cathod Grace, which will also benefit its augment, Cathod Current. Gyre's third power is where things get really interesting and fun, Cathod Grace. Gyre will surge electrical currents through herself as gyral blocks form around her. Grace grants Gyre at base an astronomical 50% critical chance bonus to her weapons, which is modded critical chance, and the abilities gain additive critical chance. During Grace, Gyre will also regenerate energy per second, which lasts for an initial duration of 8 seconds. However, for each enemy killed by Gyre, or killed while affected from a status effect which is inflicted by Gyre, the Grace duration is extended by 3 seconds up to a max cap of 1 minute. However, if the ability is over, there will be a 60 second cooldown before casting again. This ability at first glance may seem decent, 
However, the ability crit boost isn't that strong since their entire kit on its own doesn't have enough damage. The energy generation while also nice doesn't help much and you have better options of energy generation with Energize, Xenuric, and Archon Stretch. It's a great ability if Gyre's powers did do damage, but unfortunately without her augment that isn't the case. For at least low to mid level content, it's serviceable. But things get very electrical for Gyre, Kummer Ultimate, and 2 spell augment. Gyre expends energy and overcharges her coil gown as his rotors gyrate rapidly and conductive plating lift apart. This grants her at base 44% movement speed which lasts for 22 seconds at minimum. During this state, Gyre shocks all enemies within 4 meters around her inflicting 250 electrical damage per second with a guaranteed status effect. While the power is active, inflicting a critical hit with your weapons and abilities will trigger a lightning discharge that chains outwards striking the enemy and up to 5 more mobs nearby within a 10 meter sight detection. The source mob and chain mobs are inflicted with 500 electrical damage and another guaranteed status effect. You can launch up to two discharges from two separate hits and this can occur simultaneously. However, after discharging, the strike does go on a one second cooldown. The bug to the cooldown was the main reason why Jyre was so potent in the first place because she was able to constantly discharge, stunning enemies and dealing stupid amounts of damage. Now that bug has been fixed so this power on its own is rather average. It can kill low to medium level enemies but that's really about it. However, what ties Jyre together once again is her two spell augment. Cathod Current. Cathod Current is a Cathod Grace augment that bolsters Rotor's Well. While Grace is active, eliminating an enemy will release an additional discharge from Rotor's Well with 200% damage and extend the duration of Rotor's Well by the same amount. In short, you're dishing out an additional lightning discharge that does enhance damage and is further boosted by Gyre's passive. And upon doing so, the duration is constantly refreshed, meaning your Rotor's Well is on a permanent duration as long as you're getting kills. And this also ties directly into Cathod Grace and that power's duration is permanently active too, since you're snagging kills regardless of your lightning strikes and weapons. Without current, Rotor's Well wouldn't be as good of an ability as it is now, and that can be a bad thing since Cathod Current is a very big band-aid to the point where it turns Gyre into a completely different Warframe. But at the same time, Warframe is filled with band-aids, so what can you do? Now, Cathod Current isn't perfect, much like the original Gyre pre-nerf. Despite the huge damage bonus you receive with this augment, it's still electric damage. You'll be fine against unarmored units and any corpus mob, but when it comes to armored enemies, you will need to run an armor strip of some kind in order to make the most use of your discharge. Pillage being the most popular, but other options are Thar Strike, Terrify, Fire Blast, and Thermal Sunder. Unairu also works with a grouping power like Larva. However, when it comes to the entire star chart, Gyre will absolutely shred without any armor reduction. And that's Gyre, from average to hero. Gyre may have only released a year ago, but due to the small changes she's received during this time, she's made a significant impact on the game and goes to show that all it takes is a simple push to become popular. However, this may not always be the case. Other characters are in desperate need of a full-on rework. We could say that Gyre just got lucky. Anyways, that's gonna be it for me. Let me know your thoughts about Gyre down below, and I'll see you next time.